Blog Talk Radio. <coughs> Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. Well, the weeks are exciting, no question about it. Uh, preferably we talk about the things we're talking about lately than what we talked about during the Trump years. Uh, though what is happening now, I think, or I believe, is more serious. Uh, we've got Russia on the Ukraine border. China wants to go into Taiwan, take them over. The United States now has to move some military and naval forces in both areas. Uh, coronavirus is spreading. We're all concerned about the new variant. Uh, very concerned. That, gee, my God. And it's only been out less than two weeks we've discovered this variant. But we're getting on top of it, hopefully soon. And the, the normal, sooner than normal, and the problem won't be as bad. Uh, and there are all other kinds of situations going. The anti-vaxxers are increasing in numbers. So we got some things to talk about tonight. And while we're talking, we're going to be hitting Key West, New York City, Greece. What was it? Walk? Waukesha, Waukesha, Wisconsin, South Africa, Austria, and Australia. Let's start with Santa Claus. Yes, it is the season to be jolly. This is Christmas season. And guess what? There is a shortage of Santa Clauses. Would you believe we don't have enough Santa Clauses this year? Here's the story. Uh, and it has to do again with the pandemic which is affecting everything else we do in this world. Uh, that's the pandemic. Uh, now, first understand this, Kirk. Let me share this with you because I wasn't aware of this till recently. Uh, you know, I thought if you go to the mall, your local mall, and there's a Santa Claus, he's a local guy. Or you, you, you go to a, a big store and they got Santa Claus, he's a local guy. Some do. But most now are persons hired by national corporations. And they ship Santa Clauses all over the United States. And that's how these big stores and these shopping centers get their Santa Clauses. It's all organized, contracted, everything else. Well, there's a shortage. And the shortage is for two reasons. Last year, business wasn't that good, and a lot of Santa Clauses retired. You know, they're, they're fearful of, bu of the bug, and they're getting old. And they don't want to do it anymore. They don't want to be away from home at Christmas time, etc. Because as I indicated, they are shipped in from somewhere else to be in a particular store. Then there are health concerns. Many of them fear coming down with coronavirus. Some place they're going to get hit. They're going into strange territory. So let me show you how the numbers work on this because numbers don't lie. The increase, okay, in demand for Santa Clauses is up 120% from last year. we the demand is up <laughs> by 120% from last year. But again, understand, a lot of Santa Clauses weren't required because the stores didn't hire them because the cash flow was there, etc. The, the disease was, the virus was there. On the other hand, there's only 10% fewer Santa Clauses available. But because the demand is up by 120%, we do not have enough Santa Clauses. The situation is so bad that many uh, commercial enterprises, store shopping centers, and even some families have already made their reservations for next year. They're not waiting until the last minute to order up a Santa Claus. They're making them now. Places that have Santa Clauses are available. There are rules. Yep, rules have been imposed on Santa Claus and the little ones. Number one, all children two years or older must wear a mask. All children two years older must wear or older must wear a mask. Social distancing is required. And there is no lap sitting. Can you imagine taking your child to see Santa Claus and you can't even take a picture of the kid on Santa Claus's lap? But that's how it is this year, okay? Uh, next year things should be better. Hopefully they will. Hurricane season. 
This is the last day of the hurricane season for us here in Key West, and it's a wonderful day. The hurricane season runs from June 1 to 1130, uh, to November 30. We didn't have a hurricane this year. God bless America, i got to tell you. In fact, after Irma in 2017, I have a big, deep concern every year, and so do most of the people here, because Irma was a bit of a pain. It was a scare. It scared us. I'll be honest. It scared us. It scared us. Uh, and uh, the weather people said, who report on these hurricanes put out a report this weekend that this was a and I quote, quiet hurricane season. So with some minor storms around, three, 400 miles out. We got some peripheral rain on, on a one-day basis, uh, and it would rain all day, heavy rain, but not bad. Uh, and that was the story, and it's over. It wasn't anything like Irma. I hope we never see anything as close to Irma. have to share with you something interesting. I've been down here around 30 years coming here they're about 30 years living here now well i don't know 25 years or something anyhow when i first came and i don't recall accurately but i'll share with you what my recollection tells me the beginning of the hurricane season was june 1 i mean it was july 1 not june 1 we expanded it out because we got them earlier uh and the hurricane season was over 9 1 september 1st then they extended it to October 1st. Then it was extended to November 1st, which, and now 1130, I'll call it 12 first so the numbers all work. Uh, and why? Because we got hurricanes after the season had ended, postseason. Amazing! I remember a couple. We were down there. It was a week later, eight days later. Never expected a hurricane, and it came in, Okay. And so uh, that's why I think someday we may have 12 months a year uh, attributed to hurricanes. I don't know. But it just pushes out and pushes out and pushes it out. Why is this happening? Global warming? I don't think so. Because it's been over a period of 25 years that I've seen it. But I don't know. The Dow Jones. Dow Jones is rocking boy is it rocking and it has to do with coronavirus no question about it they're telling us the economic experts friday the dow was down 905 points at the end of the day at some time during the day it was over a thousand points down that was the fall was the most significant in about a year all right that was friday the market came back, not significantly, but respectfully, yesterday. Then came today, because there was an announcement uh, involving um, the new virus, the new coronavirus virus, uh, and that scared the hell out of the market, because the market today, the Dow Jones, closed at 650 points down. So it's affecting it's affecting everything, including the stock market. Okay, I want to tell you an interesting story about an anti-vaxxer. His name is Dr. Bruce Burroughs. Dr. Bruce Burroughs. Uh, Bruce Burroughs is a Key West doctor, a heart specialist, very much respected. He was the only heart doctor here when I came down here. Uh, very much respected. Uh, has uh, he still has his practice? He has people working for him. He also has three advanced advanced urgent care operations: one in Key West and two somewhere else in the state of Florida. Big. I go to them sometimes. I'll pop in. My, I'll call my regular primary care and say, "Go to urgent care for this." Big operations. I mean, it's like a little hospital, and he, he does very well. Last year, he started an insurance company. Uh, so people who don't have enough money could still buy some kind of an insurance policy to help with the medical bills. Uh, oh, I'd say maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, his he had tied in with the University of Miami, I believe, hospital, uh, and became a part of them here in Key West. He had bought a building, fixed it, and everything else. He had a war with them over money. They threw him out. He took them to court. And five years later, he beat the hell out of them. They had to pay him so much money. And it was 
a David and Goliath situation, big guy, little guy. It, that's what Burroughs won. So you got to give the guy credit. He's 71 years old. He doesn't believe in the vaccines. He believes in ivermectin. Ivermectin, you know, the drug that is uh, to take care of worms and horses. Okay, take care of worms and horses in horses. Uh, and he said, my wife and I have been taking ivermectin for 16 months, and we feel terrific. He said this last week. There was a convention, a one-day convention, one-day meeting of eight or 900 people who support ivermectin over a vaccine. Swear by it. Many were doctors. And Dr. Bruce Burroughs of Key West spoke at the meeting. And he said how terrific it was. He felt good. He believed in it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and he said, he said in his speech, ivermectin is as effective against the virus in humans as it is against worms and horses. The man was a believer. Well, guess what? The day after he came home from his meeting, he came down with coronavirus, COVID. Not only did he come down with it, seven other doctors at the meeting who didn't believe in the vaccines came down with the virus. The report since Friday on Dr. Burroughs is that he did not go to the hospital. He's being treated at home, and no further information has been available. Uh, the word on the street is the guy's quite sick. Uh, we're all assuming and hope he recovers. I think he's a horse's ass, though. He is one in the profession. He should know better than not be on the vaccine. And think how many people, because everyone respects this guy, did not take the shot, but went for the ivermectin instead, okay? Did not take the coronavirus uh, vaccine. Uh, tough situation, bad situation, and that's an example to stupidity in a certain circumstances. Now, the new virus, the new coronavirus, virus, the new COVID virus is called Omicron. Omicron. O-M-I-C-R-O-N. Everything has a source, a name, like Omicron. Where does it come from? I think it has to be some city probably in... in uh, in the mid Urals or something, or you know, or it's some strange historical fact. Turns out, it's nothing. It's simple. It Omicron is one of the Greek letters. That is a, the name of a Greek letter, and it's also the name attached to the the uh, variant. Now, let me tell you what bothers me, and it bothers me very much. No one even heard of Omicron three weeks ago. What is it? It was two weeks ago. Was it that long that all of a sudden the doctor in South Africa said, we've got a new variant. It looks like it's going to be bad. Omicron, two weeks or less. All right. It's moving. It's in 18 countries already since that two weeks ago. Not in the United States yet, though it has been in Canada. Uh, What's what do we do? What I don't like is this. Everybody's panicking. Everybody's panicking. I think people, including the president, but he's panicking because the country's panicking and he's got to, he's got to respond to the panic of the people. Uh, we ask for too much of tomorrow, yesterday. What am I saying? The variant was just discovered. Everybody wants to know. They got these, even Michelle Maddo tonight. Uh, Rachel Maddow, uh, I last night I watched her show. She was asking some big shot doctor. I have questions. Everybody wants to know how bad this is going to be. Will the present vaccines pro- provide a cure, et cetera, et cetera. And they get upset when people don't have the answers. How do you expect professionals to have an answer on something that just came out 10 to 14 days ago? I watched tonight the CEO of Moderna. He was on a talk show. He says in two to four weeks we'll have the answers to all your questions. It's because he's not as hard as it was at the beginning two years ago. We're not starting with nothing. We have all this data, all this information. We'll figure it out. 
We will know whether the present booster will be enough, whether you have to get another booster shot from what we have, or we have to come up with a totally different pill, a shot rather, and you're going to need a booster shot with that. <coughs> give the people give people a time to come up with an answer. Don't expect it yesterday. We are a lousy society when it comes to expectations. That's the only way I can put it. My advice, my advice, my advice, wear your masks again. Wear your masks again. I have been wearing mine since Sunday. Wear your masks again because even though it hasn't come to the United States, we still haven't gotten rid of the old viruses, okay, the old old variants. Uh, They're still here. Our numbers aren't terrific in this country. Less than 60% of our people have been vaccinated. Uh, We have all these anti-vaxxers that I can't understand why they want to. They'd rather kill themselves and protect their freedoms, okay? Uh, It's like they're saying, put me up against the wall and shoot me. I don't care. It's my right to be shot if I want to be. Anyhow, wear your mask. Is that too much to ask for? Uh, Even if you don't believe in the vaccine, wear your mask. Protect yourself, protect others. The world's on the edge with this new new variant, and it could be very bad. I don't know. This isn't my feel. But everybody's reacting too swiftly and panicking and wanting answers. Everything in this world today, people want answers. Uh, Now, where are we going? Ah, we are going, what was it, last week? Waukesha, Wisconsin, Waukesha, Wisconsin, and an SUV was driven by this fellow into the Christmas parade, not only into the Christmas parade, but into the spectators, and the damage done the first day were seven dead and over 40 injured, most hospitalized. One more died in the hospital, an eight-year-old girl. Uh, they had to do brain surgery on her, and she died. Uh, I think there are 13 or 14 children still in the hospital, plus adults out of the 40. And it was announced over the weekend that the perpetrator, this guy is going to go to jail for life because uh, he's in the same state that Rittenhouse had his trial. And if Rittenhouse had been convicted, he would have gone to jail for life. Anyhow, and this guy's really deserving. Uh, It was announced by the authorities this past weekend that the culprit drove in a zigzag pattern, zigzag pattern, I quote, unquote, zigzag pattern, in order to hit as many people as possible. Would you believe that? He's already confessed to the police that he drove in a zigzag pattern in order to hit as many people people as possible they should hang the guy by his testicles okay question that keeps coming up i wonder too and i'm sure you wonder those of you who have been vaccinated how long is the booster shot good for i mean i've had my two moderna shots i had my moderna i'm sorry i had my two regular moderna shots i've had my booster shot now the question is arising Forget that we got this new variant, uh, the Omicron one that came out of South Africa. Uh, How long is the booster shot good for? Well, nobody knows yet. (laughs) Again, it's a time factor. They came up with the booster shot. Same shot we got in the beginning. But they don't know. We have to see what happens. They're preparing with alternatives in case the present one doesn't work. But I want to know, too, how long is the booster shot good? I'm no different than anyone else. Uh, Dr. Fauci, on a show over the weekend, said, uh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. We're still working on it. We're reviewing the data and the new data as it comes in. We We hope to know this also in two to four weeks. I don't think an unreasonable amount of time. I don't think an unreasonable amount of time. We uh, we in this country won everything yesterday, which now brings me to Alan Walker. Alan Walker. They should put him up against the wall and shoot him. Let me tell you about Alan Walker. I'm serious. 
You're not going to believe what I'm going to share with you. Alan is an associate professor at Old Dominion University. He he either gave a speech or sent out a writing on November 15th. He's a transgender. He went from being a woman to being a man. Okay? Did not improve his, improve his appearance. I've seen several of his pictures. He's an horrendous looking man. He might have been better looking as a woman, but be that as it may. It's his right. He felt he wanted to be a man. He went from being a male, uh, a, a female, to being a male. Now, his concern are pedophiles. And he tells you outright, I am not a pedophile. However, I am queer. That's how he describes his homosexuality. I am queer, and I'm a transgender. And he's not ashamed, and that's his business. He doesn't have to be ashamed. But he says, I'm not a pedophile. And here's how it came up. He made a statement or issued a a paper on November 15th, okay, that got to stop using the word pedophiles when it comes to pedophiles because what we're doing is stigmatizing these people as being something bad. Well, I don't know what else they are but bad when you chase little boys and girls to have sex. But he says, no, it stigmatizes them. They're not happy with it. He did a survey or something. The pedophile community are not happy with that term and being stigmatized, okay? And uh, because, and he says, look, he says, not all pedophiles really attack little boys and girls. They just feel attracted to them. They enjoy looking at them. The vision gives them sexual pleasure, but they wouldn't dare do anything. And why should they be stigmatized? They should be able to walk with pride that they are a pedophile, but they don't touch the kids. Well, I know quite a bit about pedophilia. I had a major case involving a major New York State politician many years ago who was a big shot in the State Assembly, uh, who turned out to be a pedophile, and he came to Utica, New York, to hire me to represent him because everybody told me he should have me for the case, like I was an expert on pedophile. I had only heard of the term. I never handled a pedophile case before. Uh, but I went to work on it, spent about a year working on it, defending the guy. Kept him out of jail, had to lose his seat, though in the assembly be that as it may uh there's something wrong with people who are pedophiles uh two of the girls involved in the case one was seven years old and one was 11 years old and they blew them in so to speak they did belong to that stairwell i apologize for saying it. they blew them in they, they report when it came out what he was involved in uh the parents took him to the the, their children to the authorities and these two kids said he did this to us and he did everything you would anticipate or figure he would do and when he and I would discuss this he would say he would get upset he'd say they, they told on me and do you want to know something Mr. Patron they enjoyed it did you catch that last part they enjoyed it and my point is this and my reading on it in preparation for the case, once a pedophile, also always a pedophile, they've got something missing in their head. They're, they've got a screw loose someplace upstairs, all right? And that's the way it is, and they never will change, okay? Many of them are repeat offenders, all right? Uh, though my client never was, from what I can gather, though I've lost track of them over the years. Uh, and he also said, Professor Walker, that society should tolerate uh, these people, tolerate them, because they're not bad people. Now, 70 professors, I don't know if they were pedophiles too, but 70 professors signed a letter in support of Professor Walker so the university wouldn't fire him. Uh, He and the university have come to an understanding his contract runs out next May 22nd. It will not be renewed. He'll be there teaching till then. But he has not had a record as a pedophile, this guy. He's just, I guess, your normal, everyday homosexual uh, who happens to be a transgender, both of which things are not illegal. And he has not been a problem uh, that society would, or committed anything that society would frown upon, okay? 
these 70 professors in the letter of support they wrote said, and I quote, not everyone who is attracted to children abuse children. Would you believe that? Not everyone who is attracted to children abuses children. Okay, we're going to General Electric. Keep in mind, one of America's biggest, greatest, largest corporations never pays income taxes. They make billions, if not more, in dollars in profit. They never pay income tax. Yet the middle class pays taxes. The the working poor pay income taxes. I've always said we run the country on the backs of the middle class and working poor, not on the backs of the rich or these massive corporations, which is true. Now, General Electric was founded by Thomas Edison in 1892. I'm sure he paid taxes back then. It was co-founded, it was founded rather, by Thomas Edison in 1892. It was announced this past week. General Electric is splitting into three separate companies. They will have no relationship with each other. Three separate companies over the next two years. One will be for aviation, another for health care, and another for energy. Uh, something like this happens when a corporation's rocky, something's wrong, they're not making enough money or something. doesn't seem to be the case with General Electric. I'm not, or they may be into an antitrust situation. General Electric's been in business for, well, look, over 100 years. They've never had an antitrust situation. So I don't know why this changed. I could not figure out. I could not research it out. I couldn't find the answer why they're doing this. But I'll tell you something. It must be good for General Electric because the day it was announced that it was splitting into three different companies over a period of two years, the General Electric stock surged. It shot. Let me talk about corporate profits. Corporate product, I'm sorry, corporate profits in the third quarter of this year had a record high, a record high, never higher than this. In dollars, it doesn't make sense, though. It's only $3.139.1 billion, but that $3 billion is 2%, a 2% increase from the second quarter this year. It's a 28 Point two percent prop increase from one year ago, though. Can you imagine almost a thirty percent increase in profit, uh, corporate profits from last year till this year? Right. Now, it is the well. There was something in here I forgot. I forget easy any of these days. Uh, well, whatever. They're making money. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. They're making money. They're making all this profit. And yet the Republicans in the Senate, plus those two lousy Democrats, Manchin and Sinema, they're bitching and moaning about raising corporate taxes. The American people are suffering. And these senators, oh, we can't raise the taxes on corporations. Why not? They're not paying them anyhow. But if they do, are able to start paying something, they'll pay the increase. But we can't bother them. They're the big corporations. Why the hell should the middle class and the poor in this country support this nation and the wealthy and the rich corporations not? And that upsets me big time. Well, that's the show for this week, my friends. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, What can I tell you? Thank you for joining me. And come back again next week. Good night, my friends.